Welcome to an X-Plane 11 tutorial mini-series utilizing the Airfoil Labs King Air 350. In this series, I will demonstrate real-world procedures as they pertain to operating the King Air 350 and X-Plane 11. A text version of my flight department's normal procedures checklist is in the video description below. Disclaimer: The King Air 350 that I fly is the I model with Proline 21 avionics. The Airfoil Labs King Air 350 is an older model with EFIS screens and standard flight instrumentation, aka steam gauges. Differences will be discussed as we follow the checklist. Despite the instrumentation differences, it is still a King Air 350 at heart. In this video, we'll take a look at the following procedures and checklists. Engine start, after start, taxi, and before takeoff. Engine start checklist. Weight, CG, and performance. Computed. Load and baggage. Secured. Air stair door. We want to make sure that this light, the door locked, is extinguished. We can use the menu system to close the door. We heard it, and there it is extinguished. It is locked. Passenger briefing is complete. Passenger seat and tables. We normally give one glance back, make sure everyone is seated and strapped in. Pilot seats, pedals, belts and harnesses set left and right. Parking brake is set. Chocks. We normally give the line technician the signal to remove the chocks. They are removed. ESIS and battery on. The ESIS is the electronic standby instrument system, part of the Proline 21 avionics. It's essentially the standby attitude indicator and airspeed indicator meshed together in one screen. Does not apply. Battery to on. Nav. Beacon are on. Power levers, ground idle. Props full forward. And condition levers, fuel cutoff. And now for the engine start sequence. All right, starting with the right engine. Down by your left knee is the ignition and engine start switch. We'll flip that to up. We'll immediately notice a turbine or gas generator speed indication increase. We're looking for at least 12%. Once it's 12%, conditional lever to low idle to introduce fuel. We notice a, a light off, an ITT, fuel flow, oil temp and pressure rising back to the turbine speed. It's increasing. Fuel flow looks good. At 50% turbine speed, ignition back to off. All the indications are beginning to stabilize. Usually idles around 62 to 64 percent. Once the engine has stabilized, right condition lever to high idle. And the right generator switch to on will reset it. You'll notice the left gen tie and right gen tie open and right DC gen lights are extinguished. We're going to go ahead and look up and make sure the battery is charging, which it is. It's on the positive side. And we'll go ahead and start the left engine. Do the same thing. Ignition switch to on. We'll notice the gas generator speed increasing. We're looking for 12%. And that's a minimum 12%. Condition lever to low idle. Notice the ITT light off, fuel flow, oil temp pressure. Back to the gas generator speed. All indications look good at 50%. Go ahead and turn the ignition back to off. Once the uh, left engine is stabilized, we'll move the right condition lever back to low idle. We'll verify we have the left and right prop RPM lights. Left to the right here. I'll kind of I'll move the uh, prop levers for this video. So you got the two lights over here indicating a minimum of uh, 1050 RPM. And we do see that on the gauges over here. Voltmeter, we're going to look back, come back up to here, move it to the left gen, making sure that it's putting out at least 28 volts. The range is, uh, acceptable range is 27.5 to 29 volts. All right, then we're back down to the left generator. Move it to reset. The left DC gen light is extinguished. And the last item is back to the right generator. We want to move the switch into the reset position. 
and we want to make sure that the left Gentai open and right Gentai lights are still extinguished with the switch in the reset position, which they are. You'll notice that the right DC gen light is on because we're in the reset position, but once we let go of it, like that, all the lights at the top here are extinguished. And that is your engine start sequence. After start checklist, exterior lights as required, nav and beacon are on. External power if used, off and disconnected. We'll save the electrical system check for another video. Avionics master power switch. And before we turn that on, this particular King Air has the older inverter switches. We need to turn those on. One and two. We'll verify that the number one and two AC bus lights are extinguished up here, which they are. We can now turn on the avionics master power. And then we need to come down to the center console and warm up the EFIS tubes. Master panel cockpit lights as desired. Here's the switch up here and set the lighting as desired. Over to the environmental panel. We'll set the environmental to auto. Temperature as desired. Window defog as required. Keep that off for now. We'll save the vacuum and DS pressure check for another video. That's the first flight of the day check. Overspeed warning switch. That's tested. Pressurization. Coming down to the center console. We set the cabin altitude 1,000 feet above our cruising altitude. So we're cruising down to our destination at 21,000. We'll set this to 22. With this arrow pointing up at 22. There is a first flight of the day check as well, which we'll skip for another video. Friction locks are set. It's these four knobs right here. Flight controls, we'll do a check of the controls here. Move it through its full motion. Full, free, and correct. The yaw damp and electric pitch trim, we'll save those for another video as those are our first flight of the day checks. Flaps and trim. Flaps are up and indicated trims, one, two, and three set. We typically set the pitch trim to two degrees nose up. Flight and engine instruments, airspeed is zero, blue set up, brown side down, altimeters within 75 feet of the airport elevation, heading indicators matching with the magnetic compass, VSI is zero, standby attitude indicators up and erect, all the engine instruments are in the green arc. Flight director set. We typically take off in the go around mode for takeoff. Altimeters three set. This aircraft only has two. We just want to make sure that the altimeters on each altimeter are set to the local altimeter setting. TAS and TCAS. This aircraft does not have TAS. We do have the TCAS page on the GTN 750. We'll set the traffic page up. Filter to as desired. Right now it's on normal. Transponder flight ID. Right now we're squawking 1200. We can turn that to on and we'll get that to altitude uh, as we take off. V speeds and takeoff torque. V speeds set the bugs right here on the airspeed indicator. We would note the calculated takeoff torque. In this case it'll be 100. Fuel quantity. Come over to the gauge, making sure that we have the desired fuel. And last is the departure brief, and that's complete for the purposes of this video. And that's your after start checklist. Once the after start checklist is complete and we have received taxi instructions, we will clear the area, release the parking brake, and turn on the taxi light. All right, once we're on an active taxiway, we'll do the taxi check. Taxi light is on. Brakes, parking brake is released. We'll tap the brakes, make sure they work. And manual prop feather. We'll cycle the props. Should see them drop down to about four to 500 RPM. And we'll bring them right back up. Taxi check complete. All right, before takeoff check, electric heat is off. Prop levers full forward. 
prop sync on. Ice protection as required, we'll keep that off for now. Auto feather is armed. Gen load ammeter within limits. And cabin lights as desired. Before takeoff check complete.